Hello everyone, uh, my name is Oliver Oxtoby and I'm one of the developers of the CFD OF workbench for FreeCAD. Um, so CFD OF is a workbench for fluid flow simulation using the Open Foam Solver, which is perhaps the best known um, open source CFD solver with quite some industrial pedigree. Um, but it does come with the reputation for having a very steep learning curve. Um, and you can see on the right what an example of one of the input files. Um, which, as you see, requires quite a level of expertise to operate. So the objectives with this workbench were twofold. First of all, to provide a fairly easy to use um, CFD add-on for FreeCAD. And secondly, to make OpenFoam more accessible by providing a fairly simple GUI for it. Um, and the advantage of using FreeCAD for this is that one ends up with an integrated CAE solution with the CAD and the CFD analysis in one place, which is very powerful. Um, so a bit of history on this. Uh, most of the development was done um, about five years ago when I was working at the Council for Scientific and Industrial Research in South Africa with um, some colleagues of mine. Um, and the idea was to provide easy access to cold flow modeling capability um, to engineers at ESCOM, the uh, state electricity company. Um, the idea being to put basic CFD analysis tools in the hands of a, a much larger proportion of the workforce than those that had access to the uh, commercial uh, modeling tools. Um, and this followed the successful adoption of the firm workbench at ESCOM, um, and that was estimated to have generated about an eightfold return on investment if one looks at the cost of performing the equivalent uh, simulations in commercial tools. Um, these projects were championed uh, by Michael Hindley, who some of you may know as the user Michael Mull on the FreeCAD forum, um, a really wonderful man and sadly no longer with us. And he had a great enthusiasm for open source software. Uh, so CFD OF was initially created as a fork of the CFD workbench by Xingfeng Xia. Um, one doesn't like to see lots of forks being created. Um, unfortunately, our hand was a bit forced by the fact that we had very tight deadlines on this project and needed to be able to make decisions very quickly. Um, originally, our hope was to um, eventually merge it back into the CFD workbench, but um, in the event, it turned out that our, our philosophies had somewhat diverged and it just made more sense to keep CFD RF as a separate project. Um, so since that original project, um, I have been largely maintaining the workbench in my spare time, trying to smooth off some of the rough corners and increasingly getting some contributions from the broader community. Um, so it's perhaps appropriate here just to say a little about the motivation for looking at open source solutions for projects like this. Um, an obvious reason is to have a customized solution for a client. Um, one other major motivator is to not be limited by licensing costs in terms of the number of runs and the number of parallel processes one can use. Um, and this in turn allows many more engineers to be part of the design loop and, and avoid the situation where you tend to have CFD done as an afterthought after the design has been made. Um, one is in a funding a development project like this, investing in local skills and people often rather than sending um, license fees out of the country. Um, and a company maintains control over their full engineering pipeline. The, the CFD is not a black box, which you don't know what's happening in. Um, and that occurs over the full lifetime of the product, which in the case of something like a nuclear power plant, of course, could be decades and decades. And over that time, one has security on the end user license that, that can't shift under one's feet. Um, so as I said, the CFD OF workbench is a simple front end for open foam. Um, it must be said that it only scratches the surface of all the features that are available in open foam. Um, but the idea is hopefully that um, one will be able to tweak the case setup that's written by CFD OF for the more advanced cases that you might want to apply it to. Um, and one can also ship these cases off for off-site computing on a cluster, for example. Um, and we've tried to keep the installation nice and simple through the um, FreeCAD add-on manager and with the de dependency installation all centralized in place in the preferences page. 
Um, in terms of meshing, three meshes are supported, the OpenFoam native Snappy Hex mesh, uh, CF mesh, which is a third party OpenFoam based mesher, and G mesh. Um, CF mesh we found tends to be a good choice for external aerodynamics applications with lots of boundary layers. Um, the good thing about CF, both CF mesh and Snappy Hex mesh is that as cut cell Cartesian uh, volume meshes, they tend to be quite robust to dirty geometries. Um, one doesn't need to have a fully watertight uh, geometry as long as the gaps are smaller than the cell size. Um, it copes quite robustly with, with these dirty geometries. Um, in terms of solvers, at this point, we support single phase, uh, incompressible, uh, simple foam solver in, in open foam and the buoyant compressible uh, solver. And then the free surface solvers, uh, interfoam and multiphase interfoam. Um, and a solver that was also developed at the CSIR um, called HISA, which is a high speed coupled solver intended for um, transonic and supersonic external aerodynamics applications. In terms of visualization, we've handed this all off to an external um, program called ParaView. Um, and the reason for doing this is that uh, CFD meshes typically tend to be between tens and thousands of millions of cells in size. And ParaView is already very well optimized for handling these sort of enormous data sets. So here we just have a short example of a typical analysis one might want to do using the CFDOF workbench. Um, here we're just importing a CAD geometry, and this is an example of a somewhat dirty geometry that's not a watertight solid. Um, here we're just choosing to remove the propeller from the back of this geometry because obviously uh, simulating a um, propeller that's stationary is, is worse than just simulating the propeller at all. Um, and what we're doing now is to uh, cut this geometry in two. Uh, it's something that's often done in CFD just to halve the computing time if you do have a symmetrical situation. Um, and now we are going to add an external flow domain to this. Um, and that will allow us to simulate the flow around the outside of the body um, and just creating a, a compound of the two will effectively subtract the uh, body from the, the outer flow. Um, so we create a CFD analysis here, and the first task is to generate a mesh. Um, so we start uh, with a very simple case without any mesh refinements. Um, and you can see here that uh, on the file system, a uh, open phone case directory has been created with a run script for the mesher. Um, and we run the mesher just to see what this initial mesh looks like. Um, so we have built in a check mesh functionality um, that one can use just to make sure there are not any major errors in the mesh. Um, and everything is OK on that here. Um, then we also have just a very quick way of visualizing the mesh just to load the outer surface of the mesh in uh, FreeCAD. If one wants a proper visualization, one does need to load the full mesh in ParaView. Um, so as you saw from that mesh, it was horrendously too coarse. Um, so what we're going to do is create a mesh refinement on the body. So we create this mesh refinement zone, uh, choose a relative element size of 0 0.02, um, create some boundary layers to better capture the viscous layer of flow around the body, um, and we add the body to that. Um, then we're also going to create a volume refinement, uh, which extends further around the body. One can create any shape for this, in this case, a sphere. Um, and then we create a volume refinement zone um, where we refine the cells to a quarter of the edge length in the outer mesh. And having done this, we are then just going to rerun the mesh and see how, how the mesh looks now. Um, Fair disclosure, this is sped up quite considerably in the video. And you see the CF mesh uh, output running there in the report view at the bottom of the screen. So we open this in ParaView now. Um, I wasn't entirely central with my volume refinement zone, but that's not a problem. Um, and as you see, if we zoom in on this, uh, you can see the boundary layers that are around the wing. Um, 
and then switching to looking at the surface mesh on the body, you can see that the undercarriage is not captured brilliantly. There's a bit of jaggedness there. So what we're going to do is just show an example of creating another um, surface refinement zone on just the undercarriage itself. Um, and this is the sort of thing that FreeCAD really makes so much easier than manually generating um, an open foam case yourself on the text interface. Um, so we run uh, the measure again. And having a look at it once again in Paraview, you can see that that undercarriage is now much better captured. Okay, so that's the mesh. Um, the next step then is to create boundary conditions for this analysis. Um, so here we specify um, a slip wall on the body itself, and then we're going to specify the um, the internal plane um, about which we wanted to have symmetry as a symmetry plane, and the external plane we just set to be a slip wall. Now we would like to uh, simulate this aircraft at an angle of attack to the incoming flow. And the way this is usually done is to vary the angle of the incoming flow rather than the geometry itself to avoid needing to remesh it. Um, so we're setting both the front and bottom planes to as, as inlets and setting uh, fixed velocity there. And then having done this, we're going to set the top and rearmost um, planes to um, a pressure outlet, which is the standard outlet that's used in incompressible flow. Okay, then there are various other parameters that can be changed. Um, we're just renaming some of the boundary conditions. So in the physics model, one can change the type of analysis. And here we're doing a steady state analysis, single phase flow incompressible with turbulence. Um, and we are using air as our material. Um, this allows us to choose an initialization for the fields. Um, for a steady state analysis, that's not usually too important. Uh, we just set the velocity to potential flow, which gives an initial estimate um, to speed up the convergence of the simulation. And now what we're going to do is add a reporting function. Um, this has, allows us in this case to view the forces on the body um, in real time as the simulation progresses. Um, and there are other reporting functions for force coefficients and probes at certain points in the domain. So having created that, we now start running the solver. And you will see as we run it, both the, well, first of all, the case directory that's been created here. Um, you can have a look at the input file for the velocity and how the boundary conditions have been written here. And the FE schemes file, which gives the numerical discretization schemes that are used by OpenFoam. When we run the solver, um, we have this prompt. Uh, it's automatically detected that some changes have been made that affect the mesh. Um, and so we're prompted to remesh. Um, and as we run the solver, we can see the convergence of the forces on the body and the convergence of the residuals, which is basically a measure of how well solved the steady state problem is. So opening this in Paraview, one can um, interrogate the results. In this case, we're just going to have a look at the pressure plotted on the surface of the body. So 
A very useful feature of FreeCAD is this ability to record macros. Um, so as you can see here, as I tweak certain parameters, I get a live output of the equivalent um, Python code that would have that effect uh, in the bottom right-hand corner in the Python console. Um, so having made these tweaks, I've recorded a macro. Um, and if I, if I open that macro, I'm just going to make some changes to that to automatically do a sweep through these parameters, um, a sweep of this aircraft through different angles of attack. Uh, and what that's going to allow me to do is to generate a variety of different cases um, that I can then ship off for offsite computing if I wish to, um, to generate this, the data for this sweep. Um, so I've run the macro and those cases have already been generated uh, and you can see them here, these four open foam case directories. And uh, here you see the, the modified velocity in one of these examples as the, the inlet velocity. So that was just a whistle stop tour of a typical type of um, analysis that one might want to create uh, with CFDOF. Um, some of the other features, one that was um, often requested is the ability to import uh, multi-region STL files directly. Um, so instead of necessarily creating the CAD in FreeCAD, um, if one has a uh, pre-faceted file like the one one sees at the right here for this rocket, um, to be able to cope with the large number of facets uh, that are present was a, a bit of a challenge, but something we've improved considerably. And you see the example of, of the simulation in the bottom right corner. Uh, we've also added um, mesh adaptation, um, uh, an example of which you see here for shockwaves. Um, it's also available for uh, multi-phase interface. Uh, we've made various updates to CF mesh to make it more suitable for use with CFDOF. Um, we have a suite of regression tests, which allows one to conveniently see if, if one has broken anything when developing uh, the code. Um, and we have a templated case builder, which basically is a, um, a set of template files which define the open foam case files. And this makes it very convenient to be able to expand the code to other solvers, for example. Um, these files take the input quite directly from the Python code and prevent having to write too much uh, boilerplate uh, text file output uh, code. Then various other uh, features that have been added, support for LES analysis for these reporting functions, scalar transport functions. Um, thank you very much to Jonathan Berg for his input in those. Um, and then we have a bundled Docker installation um, that allows one to basically install all of the dependencies as a single Docker file um, and speed up that process quite considerably. Um, just a quick overview of the uptake around the world. Um, at the moment, we appear to be um, running at around 200 installations of the workbench per week, and that's remained roughly constant between 2020 and now with a roughly equal Windows and Linux split. Um, so there are many applications of this that people have shared on the forum. Um, we don't have time for all of them, unfortunately, but this is just one example, which is perhaps uh, notable in that it has uh, an experiment associated with it. And um, good agreement was reached between the experiment and the simulation of uh, this vortex generator device. Uh, thank you to Michael Slee for sharing this. Um, so we welcome many and all contributions. Uh, probably, I think the most urgent thing for now is some written documentation. There isn't anything at the moment, um, and it would be great to have something for sure on the FreeCAD wiki. Um, but the list goes on almost indefinitely. Um, and I'd just like to say some thank yous to Jan Haynes and Alfred Bogars, with whom I originally developed the workbench. Uh, the original creator of the CFD workbench, of course, as I mentioned. Um, Michael Hindley for being the driving force behind this. Um, and then I think uh, the companies ESCOM and CSIR do deserve credit for agreeing to release these packages as open source. Um, thank you to all the contributors listed here and those that have created training material on YouTube. Um, particularly, I must say thank you to Thomas Schroeder, who's been ever present on the forum since 2017. And I'm not sure if we would have any users of the workbench if it wasn't for the help 
get into all of them. Finally, I'd just like to thank my employer, Angus, for tolerating my hobby of tinkering around with CFDOF. So that is a very quick intro to the workbench. Um, I hope you'll go and try it out for yourself. Thank you for your attention.